Previously, when Commander Tristian brought exhausted Lul into her bedroom, she dreamt of embracing Tristian tightly with multiple kisses on her bed. However, as Tristian left, he met Duke Almondite outside Lulin's bedroom. But before they could start their fight, they heard a loud cry of Lulin from inside. And, upon entering the room they found Lulin crawling on her bed in greater pain. Besides, as Almondite came near her, she grabbed his hand in the control of the curse and swiftly kissed his lip, which left Tristian clearly betrayed. So, let's dive into the chapters 35 and 36 of the Manhwa, the secret bedroom of the Forsaken Princess. Not wanting to stop, Lulin proceeds to place multiple kisses on his lips in the spell of the stigma. This intimate situation between them gives a heavy blow to Tristian, who reflects that his desire is just a trifle although he wants her to look at him, not at Almondite. But as he clenches his fist in anger, he adds that he was greedier than he thought. From here, the scene shifts to the next bright morning, where Lulin rustles up from her pillow and remembers that she fainted after meeting King Bastion last night. But wait, is she really forget about how wildly she kissed Almondite in the charm of the curse, right in front of Tristia? Anyways, by touching her neck, she reflects why is the stigma so oddly quiet today. Because what she remembers from last night is that the stigma was completely out of her limit. However, her gaze abruptly falls on a note placed on the side desk. And, as she opens it, she finds that it is from Almondite, who writes that last night she looked quite unwell, so he just went home. Plus, he asks her to take care of herself and contact him later. Reading this, she ponders that did he come here last night to meet her. Further, by tossing the note away, she annoyingly asks herself who is he to tell her to contact him. Besides, she considers that last night she got nightmare about Emily, the maid who used to stay by her side to protect her. However, Emily died a gruesome death from Lulin's father violence, because her crime was that she caught stealing some bread from the kitchen, as Lulin was not allowed any food per Pamela's orders, and, even she begged in front of her father to forgive Emily. Yet, until the very end, Lulin's father paid no heed to her pleads. Moreover, by releasing an arrow against her, he pierced Emily's head brutally right away in front of Lulin's eyes. Although, that incident was devastated for her, but she was powerless that time and due to which, she till now pretended to be fine and tried her best to survive. Eventually, Rosalie abruptly crashes inside the bedroom, which visibly flinches Lulin. Noting her sudden presence, Lulin mutters that the servants do not even knock anymore these days. Rosalie then wordly inquires if she is feeling alright, since she had a nightmare and a high fever last night. Plus, she informs that Almondite was here all night because he was worried about Lulin. This prompts her to gaze back towards the note, muttering that the note already explained her everything. However, Rosalie angrily springs up, informing that Queen Pamela summoning her for breakfast, since she is going to welcome Lady Vivian as a new member of the royal family. Hearing to this, Lulin reflects that Pamela really wants to make that woman a part of the family. On the other side, Rosalie gears up with makeup brushes, stating that Lulin does not have much time. Therefore, they must start dressing her up quickly. Dear viewers, apologies for the interruption. If you're genuinely enjoying the content on this channel, please consider hitting the subscribe icon with all notifications, since this little support of yours will help this creator continue delivering high-quality work to brighten your day. And take a moment at the end of the video to leave a comment, sharing your thoughts on the content. Your feedback means a lot. Now, let's not take up too much of your time and jump back into the story. As some time passes, Lulin emerges out from the room after dressing up, whereat observing Tristan's presence, she swiftly greets him. Further, she questions if by any chance, he also stayed up all night, upon which, he nods with an expressionless face. Noting his response, she asks herself if something happened last night because he looks totally exhausted. However, as he swiftly inquires if she is alright now, Lulin startles heavily, and, by blushing clearly, she announces that Tristan does not have to do stand outside guarding her bedroom anymore since it is not his duty. To this, he interferes, speaking that he does not want to because this is his duty to protect her, so he asks her to just accept this. Listening to his statement, she worriedly reflects that she does not want Tristan to meet Queen Pamela at all, for which, she directly orders him to call for Sir Paulo because he will be her escort today. And, by imagining Paulo's face, she ponders that she cannot think of anyone but him only in this situation. Plus, she adds that it is right for Tristan since she does not know what Pamela will do upon witnessing him as her escort. To this, Tristan maintains his silence for a bit, then, with a dejected expression, he states that he will obey her orders. From here, the scene lands in the dining hall, which is decorated with delicious foods and elegant wines. And, as Princess Lulin arrives near dining table, she eventually greets Queen Pamela, who by delivering a piercing glare, states that Lulin is late as usual. However, Lulin turns to Lady Vivin's side and conveys the greeting to her also. To this, Vivin puts a bright smile, replying that she was waiting for Lulin's arrival for so long. 
Upon which, Luolin annoyingly reflects that Lady Vivian really thinks that she is above her, as she does not even bother to stand up and greet her. Yet, by maintaining her composure, she adds that let's be civil for now. Further, by taking her seat, Luolin casually inquires why she cannot see King Bastion to this meal, adding if he is not invited. Hearing this, they suddenly halt their hands. Moreover, as the atmosphere fills with a chilling aura, Luolin considers that she did not say that to point something out. Plus, she wonders if they know how much Bastion suffered last night. Eventually, Pamela calls Luolin, announcing that now Lady Vivian is a member of the royal family, so from now on she will care for Vivian and her baby with good intentions. At which, she responds with yes. However, upon noticing the color of the meal, Luolin confirms that the soup is completely rotten. But as she observes the Lady Vivian and Queen Pamela enjoying their meal with sweet talk, Luolin reflects that it looks like she is the only one who received this. Besides, looking at their fake peaceful and innocent faces, she mutters that did they call her here to witness this painfully obvious war of nerves. Nevertheless, as Queen Pamela discloses that from now on the Amstry room will be Vivian's baby quarter, Luolin abruptly stops and jolt towards Pamela, who by putting a smirk on her face, maniacally glares towards her. Moreover, by trembling heavily, Luolin remembers her loving days with her brother in that room. And, delivering a disgusting look, she reminds Pamela that the Amstry room is her brother, Alphys's room. Yet, by cornering her one side, Pamela speaks that a room where a prince has lived before, so does not she think it would suit Dion. By the way, Dion is Lady Vivian's son name. To this, Luolin terrifyingly responds Pamela that King Bastion had promised to keep the room preserved as it is. And then, she imagines that on nights when she cannot help but miss her family, she would quietly go to Alpheus' room at night where she relieves her day's struggles on his small bed covered with his blanket. Moreover, her heart comes to rest at witnessing his toys that the young mischievous kid would carry around, and his favored book. On top of which, his cute baby photo on the side wall reminds Lulin that this place is her only safe haven in the palace. However, interrupting her thoughts, Pamela shouts that the things have changed now since a new prince is coming. To this, Lulin yells at her. But Pamela intervenes by refreshing Lulin that Alpheus was a prince who gave up his title, so there is no reason to keep that old-fashioned room. Plus, she rebukes Lulin, stating that she is ordering her to leave this room as it is, solely for her wishes. And, this is how she shows her selfishness towards King Bastion Grace. In an instant, Pamela decloses which is why, after considering Lulin tantrum, she has given orders to clean Alpheus's room. Listening to Pamela's word, Luolin feverishly springs up and starts sprinting towards Alpheus's room, reflecting that she needs to stop them from doing it. Observing Luolin's reaction, Pamela orders her white guards to stop her immediately. At complying, a guard grabs her from behind, and, as they restrict her from leaving, Luolin angrily yells who do they think they are touching right now. However, she twists her foot and crashes on the floor by face. Seeing her situation, Pamela and Vivian become animated visibly. On the other side, Luolin feels embarrassment on her condition, reflecting this is the reason they called her, to show the newest member on her side, Lady Vivian. Plus, she adds that she is the princess who is nothing in the eyes on these people, because considering past six years, the people of Brygen come to know that the real owner of the kingdom is none other than Queen Pamela. Yet, Luolin halts her thoughts, reminding herself that right now she might still be able to save Alpheus's portrait if she rushes over there. Besides, by clasping her fist, she adds that she needs to save that at least, because if she does not, she might forget Alpheus's face one day. Moreover, she knows what these people wants from her. Therefore, even though she has to throw away her pride, she cannot lose everything. And, as these ladies come near her, Lulin against her will, beg in front of Pamela by crying to sow some mercy on her. Eventually, a flying punch lands on the guard's face, who is vehemently holding the princess. That leaves him completely out of conscious. To this, Luolin swiftly turns back, and, surprisingly finds Commander Tristian, who ferociously asks the guards how dare they lay a finger on Princess Luolin. Plus, by easily dragging a guard by his one hand, he angrily throws it in front of Queen Pamela. Furthermore, at approaching near Luolin's side, Tristian extends his helping hand towards Forsaken Princess, inquiring if she is alright. As we wrap up today's segment, thank you for being with us until the very end. I'll be sharing fresh videos of this manga and exciting new series every weekend. Your support is invaluable, so please subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay updated. Your encouragement keeps the channel thriving, and I appreciate it immensely. Until next time, take care and goodbye.